morning my soccer universe well yesterday I learned kids Mother's Day and soccer don't really mix well uh, the last two actually would have worked but the kids anyway uh, we got them straight they finally got playing so I could watch the Premier League final um, I actually had a brief thought, yeah, shall I watch just the second half of the Eredivisie uh, match day conference goes on on the zone. Um, I was very tempted, but then I said, okay, if I miss something at the Premier League, I basically um, would not be happy with myself. And you know, it was kind of building up. I said, let's focus on one thing, let's not go all overboard. And yeah, it, what shall I say? For a blink of a second there, it looked like Liverpool might have a chance. They took an early lead through uh, Mane, Sadio Mane, and this is where my confusion with Leroy Sané comes in. Uh, Sadio Mane and Leroy Sané, I mean, not only are their last names so um, similar, just S and M, um, great Metallica album, uh, mixed, but also, Mane has S has, has his first name, so absolutely confusing. Uh, at which point he was only one uh, goal behind Mohamed Salah uh, for the lead in the best striker. Uh, not best striker, but you know, highest goal scorer in the league. Um, and City still had a nil-nil and you gotta give it to Brighton. They surely gave City a fight. Uh, at least in the first half, they try to defend, you know, do the honorable thing, how I would expect it from an English team. We'll talk about other teams where the expectations are maybe not as high. Um, so in the end, I thought, okay, when uh, Liverpool took the lead, they were at that moment uh, first in the table. And then it happened in 26 that Brighton actually after a corner takes the lead and I'm woohoo! I was lying on the couch and suddenly I sat up I uh, thought wow actually there might be something happening because I was thinking this will be what everyone is expecting the city will eventually get the goal and then there's no looking back so that was a little bit against the script in, 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 in a way and ignited me for about a minute because more or less right off the kickoff Aguero gets into, into the box, slots it home 1-1 one, one, and that, uh, since it went so fast I thought okay there is no way that City is gonna uh, not manage to get a winner and you could even see it a little bit in Liverpool they they switched over and I think it went very so fast that most people didn't even realize that Brighton had the lead for a second so yeah uh, still the anxious wait there Liverpool pressed Wolves pretty hard I mean maybe not all as hard as against Barcelona uh, but yeah, they really tried to get something going and score maybe a second one. But you could also see they had a really tough game uh, during the week. And the chances are, you know, that you win it were maybe not that high. So, kind of a so and so game. Um, then they pulled over to City, and you could really see. Uh, how City got the pressure on at that moment. I was in a phone call. I mean, I, I was watching um, During the phone call, but yeah Maybe not as attentively, but uh, City put the pressure on there was one situation already uh, where You could see that the Brighton defense was very condensed around the goal and City was with four or five men in the box uh, just around is it looked really like handball in many many ways and that's how it felt so it was to me at that point only a question of time until City gets the uh, the second goal and it arrived short shot there after um, corner kick uh, Laporte more or less a free head I mean he had a nice run in had it in 2-1 for City and to me that was that um, I 
didn't see Brighton coming back from uh, that deficit. By the way, speaking of Laporte, um, I really like those City away jerseys that they were playing in yesterday. I really do, and I saw I saw this one in a local store for 50 -ish and was a few times already thinking of getting it, but it's kind of still slightly above my threshold. If it's 40, I would have bought it. Uh, that much I can say. But they had one with Laporte on the back, <laughs> which, yeah, he scored the championship winning goal. I mean, all the others that are coming, they were not winning goals. So, yeah, I uh, have to see. If it's still there in a month or so, I might get it. Oh, that, that, uh, I'll wait for it. Maybe it will come cheaper. Uh, that's the one city jersey that I can really imagine getting because it really looks gorgeous uh, even paired with those uh, greenish socks there is just something about it that I absolutely love about this shirt anyway so at halftime we are where we started out with and it remained that way uh, actually Wolves then got the better of the second half uh, in Liverpool but couldn't really score oh, yeah, Wolves had uh, actually a a uh, shot that hit the bar, as far as I can remember, e e even the first half. So right around when City scored the two, two goals, Wolves came uh, close. And it continued that way. Uh, in the second half, Wolves not maybe, um, how to say, not with the uh, absolute pressure to go forward, but Wolves definitely uh, had the bet of the game and were dangerous and probably would have even deserved an equalizer. Where City uh, scores goal, well, two more goals, uh, actually quite some pretty ones through Mares and uh, Gundo and a free kick, which was the title side. And I would not have been surprised at that point if uh, Wolves get the equalizer. It's actually Liverpool that got the second goal um, that in VAR. If VAR was there, would not have counted, but Sadio Mane gets his second goal of the evening, uh, of the afternoon, I should say, uh, pulls level with Mohamed Salah at 22, and since uh, Aubameyang also scored, um, I think he scored once, he also finishes uh, top of the table uh, with 22 goals. Um, Arsenal, I think, got the win. Uh, in the end, playing in their horrific mint green jerseys, I really, I really dislike them. Um, I, there's another video, video in in the white clubs play around with crazy shirts, and more on that in a bit. Um, another crazy shirt, but yeah, it's uh, it is what it is. It is what it is at the moment. Um, I was also surprised when you saw the um, scenes at the end of the game that especially Liverpool, who still will stay with the same supplier, City didn't have that um, luxury because they are now switching to Puma. Uh, that the kids of the players were already in the new jerseys for Liverpool for the next season, where the where is the players still had to play in their old jerseys, which makes me wonder, maybe the Premier League has a rule that teams have to play uh, the whole season in one uh, jersey, which I and on, honestly, like I always dislike liked it when, for instance, Bayern Munich or uh, Juventus uh, pull out their newest, the, the new jersey for the next, the next season or, or in the last set of games. I never liked that one. Uh, I always think they should wear the same jersey for the entire season then you can switch I still would say keep every jersey should have a shelf life of two years and then you switch but I understand it's all about moneda um, anyway uh, so you saw that and then the other thing and it was almost an agonizing wait I really got my girls excited about the cup with the crown of the Premier League title and they wanted to see it and it takes freaking 45 minutes to arrive there. Uh, I know you want to have it on the field, you probably want to have, have a close tool to the fans and I saw they had a big setup there with all the ticker tape and flames going up blah 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 blah. Is it necessary? 
we have a nice little stay, stay, stay stadium there, walk up, give the, give the trophy up there, uh, somewhere in the stands, make something like that. Uh, or make a quick ceremony on the field. But you know, the players changing back and uh, it took way too long, way too long. Um, fortunately, there was really nothing else on. I was not really interested in the, uh, the Cagliari Napoli game, although that was the Southern Derby in Italy. Uh, Napoli won 2-1 two, two and uh, La Liga was still out, but I didn't watch much La Liga. So, Premier League is done. Uh, staying in England, we also had an old firm uh, match, Rangers against Celtic. And Celtic are already champions, but Rangers refused to make the guard of honor, which I find is such a weak uh, statement. If if even Barcelona can do it for Real Madrid and vice versa, uh, why cannot do Celtic Sel and Rangers do that? This is we are way past the sectarian shit that's going on there. I really don't get it. This is something that actually angered me a little bit. Uh, yeah, Rangers got also a 2-0 win, fully deserved. Uh, since it's the oldest continued uh, derby. I think it's worth mentioning. Uh, it's still. Whenever I see a little bit uh, SPL, I always. It's always said that the Scottish teams are such known factors. I mean, in the 90s, there was a season where Rangers almost made it to the Champions League final. I think it was 93, and now they are nowhere. And if they're in the Champions League, they are cannon fodder. That's not how it should be. I. That's at least how it, this is how high it is, but it should. Those teams are actually huge. But you know, the Scottish FA will do their best to not get its teams into the Premier League, which probably where they should play. Anyway, we won't have, we won't see an all British uh, Championship anytime soon, which is also a little bit of a shame because it's those two clubs that are typical. Of that. I think if there was if there was a UK league, and I understand all the politics behind it, but if there was a UK league, I think uh, Rangers and Celtic would be much bigger teams than they are currently. Okay, uh, Spain didn't see, I saw very minimal things, I more or less watched the results. I volunteered to put the girls to bed, you know, Mother's Day and so on, and also help a little bit in the cleanup and we also had dinner so I decided um, Spain is not yet in the last gas but something did happen I saw, at first I had a little bit Barcelona Getafe on and I still saw the first half but then I said yeah I know Getafe it's there is something going for Getafe but I, when I saw that the stands in Barcelona were more or less uh, not empty but it was noticeably less spectators especially behind the goals than they usually are. I know that those uh, spots behind the goal, they are not great spots. I was once uh, down there, all the way up on the lower level. Um, you don't see much. Uh, the camp now, I would go high up. I mean, even if you go level, you see quite well. It has great sight lines, but not on the, on the lower levels. Of course, you're then very close to the pitch, but you know, uh, to the players, but you don't see very, very well. So I never liked. Uh, I, I didn't like that spot back then. So then I switched over. I think uh, I was quickly thinking about Atleti Sevilla, which ended 1-1. Uh, but now nah, it was Valencia all, all of us because Valencia really, if they get a win, they have a chance of actually drawing level with Getafe, and that's what they got. I mean, Alaves took a one lead, and Alaves was was playing in their. Basque country away kids, which I actually like. I think they're the best all of its kids. Uh, and I was and I'm wondering why uh, Bilbao or Real Sociedad are not using those, especially Bilbao would look as an alternate kit. This would look really great. Uh, but Valencia turned turned it around and won 3 1. And yeah, uh, Getafe lost to Barcelona 2 0. First goal, free kick Messi, kind of a little bit scramble on the line, and Vidal puts it in. And second goal, also Messi there, but he, he, he didn't touch it and uh, 
went in on goal. So uh, two nil. That and Valencia is now in fourth place, and I have. I will do the video this evening, post tomorrow, to see uh, what's the remaining problem for these uh, teams. But Valencia now in fourth. They seemingly have the head to head against Getafe. This means uh, they are in a better position, of course, to make it to the Champions League. As much as I would have liked Getafe to go get in there, I probably think that Valencia would be better for uh, the league as a whole. Almost. And you know, it will make me wear my wonderful Valencia jersey. And then my eyes were basically on the Serie A, the game in the evening between uh, Roma and Juve. I'm wearing Roma, Roma won 2-0, uh, but it was not that straightforward. Um, January, Roma, I keep telling, it's my second favorite team in Italy at the moment. It's just that they're in a dogfight with Milan, Atalanta for this last Champions League spot. So I wanted to actually see how will you approach this game? Um, because next Saturday or uh, Sunday, they play against Atalanta. And as a Milan fan, I hope that Juve wins. Then um, if Milan gets to wins, they would be in the Champions League, which is what they badly need. Uh, on the other side, I've said it before, um, Long term it would be bad for Milan, but I think if I look at the season, Milan will not deserve that spot. I keep repeating myself. Uh, Atalanta really plays well, uh, plays an exciting brand of soccer. Even this, even when Milan played well for one half at Fiorentina, the second half was again the same uh, hard to watch soccer. The Roma Juve game was anything but hard to watch. Uh, it was actually Juve who had Tremendous chances, and it was Roma's uh, reserve goalkeeper. And probably he, he got the spot now from um, Olsen. Sorry, I don't. His name is escaping me now. Who made two huge saves? One on Dybala, uh, I think one on Cuadrado early on, where Juve must have scored at that point. Um, and Juve had a third huge chance. Uh, that uh, again, Dybala is saved and goes through the post. Um, absolutely crazy. At the same time, Roma had a huge chance where it hit the bar. Um, and then Pellegrini also had a wide range that went not too far off. So, uh, well, the game might have not been the fast paced one, and Juve had actually control for most of the time. Uh, there were huge chances to at least have a 2 1 halftime lead. And now I gotta say, Juventus played in their new jerseys and these are horrible. Um, you know, Juve is striped and uh, actually very thinly striped. That should be the classic Ju Juve kit. What do we get? A half and half kit. I mean, I've seen it before, but now I've seen it in action. Uh, I absolutely dislike this one. And then the pink stripe in the middle. I know pink has some significance for Juve because this was their first uh, jersey color. But Boy, do those these look weird. And then on the back, it makes it even worse because you have this solid background. Uh, it doesn't look good. I actually would say it should be fine if you have on the blacks. I mean, if you go half and half, half on the black side, a white number, on the a white side, a black number, that would make more sense to me than make this huge black background. Uh, and I know there were some new UEFA kit rules that the pad on the front needs to be on the back. Hopefully for next season we have this, because I hate this big swaths. Especially, I'm, this is now me as a collector, I'm not gonna get this jersey at any point. Yeah, now that I've said it, they will win the Champions League and I have to get it some, somehow. No. I hate those. I like the UV shirt that I got last week. Uh, that's a classic, you, you usually classic black and white stripes. This is what, what we're gonna see. I'm even somewhat is okay with the wider stripes that they had this season, although it's still not very you, but a half and half look with a pink stripe in the middle. I'm sorry, uh, that's a clear no. Uh, and I was even, even wondering, this might be the worst, at least the worst home jersey that Ronaldo ever, ever, ever played in. And it's probably easy to say because United is playing all in red. Yes, they had sometimes a weird color and this, you know, one of those 
around 2005 that there also might be in contention for also being uh, among the worst churches. But um, Real Madrid usually has a very classy, I mean, if you're pure white, you don't have, there's not much you can do wrong with. And I would say the same thing goes for United, although they have tried harder to mess up their kit than uh, Real Madrid ever did. But this jersey, I'm sorry, this is an, is an a, abomination. I have to look at the away kits in, during Ronaldo's career. Maybe maybe there was one, uh, a bad one there too. But again, United away kits, there's none, uh, at least during his time, that stands out as being explicitly horrible. And Real Madrid also usually has unique colored away kits. Um, this really might be the worst jersey of Ronaldo's career. Ronaldo seemed a little bit off in the game, but you know, I was kind of, yeah, Juve is playing uh, okay, -ish. maybe has him more, more, more of the game, so they take it seriously, but it was also, they did not go in there with the, uh, you know, with the last punch, uh, don't exert themselves too much, it's a meaningless game for them, and you could see this during the end of the game, Ronaldo ac ac actually scored a goal, uh, which was chalked off, uh, for offside, rightly so, because he was just a little bit ahead. Again, if he's a little bit more aware of the position of his position um, in relation to the defender, he would have gotten that goal and would not have been offside. So yeah, I think if Ronaldo make, may, makes a goal, there's no way for Roma back. That way Roma hangs in and actually through a beautiful uh, move over Florenzi, uh, I think a double pass with um, Jacko it was, makes it 1-0 uh, for Roma and the celebrations were huge. I mean, Roma draws level with Milan, is still in sixth spot, but you know, uh, that's three points behind Atalanta. Inter still has to play tonight, but uh, you would think that Inter should get the win against Chievo tonight and that uh, will put them in good position. I think Inter's uh, remaining schedule is such that I don't see them getting drawn into this battle for the Champions League spots. Although I would be super excited about it, honestly. Milan fan, of course. Although I'm getting a little bit softer in winter. I'm, I'm getting old. Uh, anyway, so 1-0 for um, Roma. Juve tries a little bit, but it was not very convincing. And in the end, Jaco makes it 2-0 kill. Kills of the game. 2-0 to Roma and we have a uh, crazy Champions League battle in Italy too. Uh, in Germany it's really he heating up. Uh, Frankfurt loses at home to Mainz 2-0. I think Frankfurt will not get into the Champions League. Uh, and that's probably due to them playing so much in the Europa League. Which is counterintuitive, but I, th I really think that this is what's happening there. And yeah, uh, a great Frankfurt season is probably uh, ending could end outside of European spots. We'll see where it will go. Well, that was my watching uh, for yesterday. As I said Premier League, I watched and I watched the Roma Juve game, and I saw highlights of Spain. And in the Eredivisie, I, before I forget it, uh, also something big happened, something that made me happy. I uh, will probably look at it uh, in more detail in the video this afternoon. Ajax won um, against Utrecht, I think it was 4-1, and Alkmaar, I think it was Alkmaar, uh, won 1-0 against PSV, so Ajax has a 3-point lead plus goal difference in their favor. So Ajax, after their horrible disaster, looks good for the title, there's one. I think it's in the middle of the week, there's one more round to play for them, and then that's that. So, interesting, interesting. Uh, what do they have two more rounds? We'll see, we'll see in the evening. But a three point lead for Ajax, that means I think Ajax will get this title. Uh, and I have to repeat, we've seen how strong Ajax can be in Europe. PSV is as good. They just had the horrible draw in the first round where if you saw the games they could have they should have gotten way more out of these games than they did uh, so at, especially at home to inter they got completely uh, 
robbed by the referee. Anyway, as I said, I'm gonna do a roundup video. Um, I have to see, I might, I, I might actually do it tomorrow because there are quite some Monday night games in Italy and it might be worth it to uh, wait for those results. There are two videos I wanna make, uh, the roundup video and I wanna do uh, a video on is the Premier League really the best league at the moment? I already said my short answer, I'm not gonna say it again. Uh, you can guess it, but I wanna look at some numbers behind it to uh, put it in uh, relation. I also, there, I will probably get back to my top 10 videos soonish uh, when we go closer to the Champions League final. Uh, I didn't have time to, because they had a lot of work and I wanna do at least one. One a month now. Uh, let's see how it will go. Anyway, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Uh, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that might be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will give you all the updates on my channel, all things my soccer universe. And with that, I want to wish you a wonderful day.